Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I've got a couple of videos that I've grouped together, just purely because uh, individually they may not be long enough for your viewing pleasure. So I thought I'll combine them so you've got um, just shy of 12 minutes worth of earwax removal. So this is patient one, they attended with a blocked right ear and we're just at the entrance here. So you can subdivide the ear canal. And uh, this is something that um, is new to me, I've never come across it as well. So, But you can actually subdivide the ear canal into three separate sections. The outer third, as we know, is the cartilaginous portion and I typically call that the lateral aspect, lateral portion. But you can actually call that the pars externa. Then the middle section of the ear canal, so the, the second uh, third of the ear canal, the pars media, and the uh, latter third of the ear canal, the pars interna. Now the term pars, we normally use pars um, when describing the anatomy of the eardrum. So the main body of the eardrum, about 80% of the eardrum, we call that the pars tensor. And then uh, the top section of the eardrum um, above the short process of the hammer bone, we call that the pars flaccida. But um, if it, I'm just, uh, some of you may be aware, I've, I've mentioned it in the last couple of videos and um, put a few posts up on my other social media feeds, uh, like on Facebook, Instagram, um, etc., that we are recommencing our Clearwax training course very shortly. So I'm just updating all of our training material. And for the last couple of weeks, I've just had my head in the books, um, just trying to develop my own knowledge further and uh, during that process I come across these three phrases and I've never come across those before so <laughs> I've never heard them being used before but they are uh, recognized terms so um, yeah so if you hear me using those phrases in future um, hopefully you remember what they are and I will we'll try and remember um, remind you guys so we're now um, just trying to use the right correct here just to remove some of this more lateral wax um, it's got this very sticky soft um, consistency it's, it's very hard to vacuum with this and you'll see that in a moment so we are we will put some medical grade olive oil spray just to change the consistency of this you can see it's all smeared um, so that thick butter so obviously we're trying to lift it off the canal wall but that can be difficult because it's smeared and as you guys know, the, the bony, the osseous part of the ear canal, so the inner two thirds, the pars um, media and interna, it's very, very sensitive. The skin that lines the bony part of the ear canal, the osseous section, it's less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness and it's the epidermal layer of skin. There's no dermis or hypodermis, or also known as subcutaneous layers. There's no insulating um, fat there, uh, which can help to buffer um, any contact that we make so we're literally skin on bone you can probably compare that to your shin bone where the skin is extremely thin um, so if you take a knock to your shin as we all know it can be very very painful and the bony part of your ear is equivalent if not more so now the patient's got quite dry skin particularly at the entrance of the ear canal um, in their conchal bowl so the flap of cartilage on either side of our head we call that the oracle also known as a pinna and just uh, adjacent to the entrance of the ear canal you've got this bowl and we call that the concha bowl there's two segments the simba concha which is the top part and the cavum concha which is a, um, the main body of the bowl and patient's skin there is quite dry so um, a bit of superficial otitis externa i don't think it's any psoriasis or eczema it doesn't have got the signs of that now patient is elderly and as we do get older some of our sebaceous glands which are also found on the pinna itself the oracle um, they are less because of reduced blood flow they're less functional or that the hair because they're attached to the hair follicles they can miniaturize so we get less secretion of sebum so less glandular secretions and sebum is a oily lipid secretion also also found in our, inside the ear canal itself but also on our scalp all over the body they they are attached to the hair uh, follicles and they there to moisturize the skin and keep it uh, hydrated so it prevents internal moisture in the skin cells lining the the surface and also the gaps in between uh, from uh, evaporating so it because sebum is hydrophobic it 
it helps to trap internal moisture and also repel external moisture. So it could just be uh, the patient's skin is just drying up um, because of their age and the less producing less sebum. So just this bit here, I've managed to kind of coagulate it together so it's in one piece and it's just trapped at the entrance where at the location of the first bend just to the left all the hair, hair strands are, you can see them protruding outwards. So these hairs generally protrude slightly to, towards the entrance and not fully understood why, but the, the rationale behind it is it almost creates uh, a one-way um, barrier for wax to migrate out and it also helps to stop invaders uh, from bodies, insects, etc. from entering when it's when they're flaying outwards. Um, so just mopping that up. You can see the patient's eardrum. It looks textbook, really. So there's a bits and bobs around here. I'm just going to quickly mop up. A um, bit of wax is good for us, guys. I don't think I need to explain that. Um, well, I will explain it because there might be some new um, subscribers, viewers to the channel. So wax is actually good for us. Wax is... Um, a combination of three ingredients. It's made up of um, dead skin cells um, of the epidermis layer, so the outermost layer of skin, the epidermis, which is there as a protective barrier. And these um, outer um, uh, epithelial skin cells, they all originate from the centre of the eardrum, so they're all um, uh, uh, formed and secreted at the centre of the eardrum, we call it the umbo, and then these skin cells they radially move outwards uh, across the eardrum and then across the ear canal to line it. And as the skin migrates from the centre of the eardrum outwards, um, the outer layer of skin, the epidermal layer of skin, the individual skin cells are connected, they're interconnected. And they're also, there's five layers of skin on this epidermis layer. And so the outermost layer is also connected to the layer beneath it. Um, it's almost a lamella structure. So think about... Um, Kind of medieval body armor, how these plates of armor would be connected together. But as the skin migrates away, further away from the eardrum towards the entrance, especially on the outer third, they begin to detach themselves from one another um, and also from the underlying surface. So we call that uh, desquamization. Um, so the old individual skin uh, begins to flake away from one another and they begin to then. Um, shed um, uh, away from the ear canal and they continue to migrate from the cartilaginous juncture of the ear canal where it meets the bone towards the entrance of the ear where they can exit and from there um, they also are assisted by jaw movements when we move our jaw it helps to push along these dead skin flakes so when they um, shed and migrate out of the ear it is a kind of an invisible process but in the outer third of the ear canal as well you've got um, two glands you've got the sebaceous glands which are connected to the hair follicle as i described earlier and you've also got a modified sweat gland called um, apocrine um, sweat glands and they produce an oily sweat so it's different to the ecrine glands which produce more of a watery salty sweat this is more of an oily odorous sweat and these glands either have um, channels uh, reaching the surface directly or they can connect to the hair follicle as well so with these two um, glands when they secrete um, sebum and cerumen so cerumen is the the name given to the, the oily sweat secretion when they reach the surface um, they then coat the, the, uh, the surface of the skin to hydrate it, uh, protect it from bacteria and fungi, and also to trap any foreign bodies that may enter the ear because it's quite sticky. Um, the dead skin flakes um, begin to uh, merge and amalgamate with these oily sweat, the apocrine sweat and the, the sebum, and that's earwax. That's just what it is. And for the majority of us, this wax naturally migrates out of this. As that underlying skin continues to migrate, any wax sitting on the surface is kind of transported out of the ear, and your ear uh, recycles uh, the, the old wax with new wax. It's a continuous cycle. So the wax itself, it's mildly acidic, and the mild acidity helps to keep 
at native bacteria in the ear at bay. Um, so the bacteria in the ear that live there normally without causing any problems, we call that as part of the skin flora, and they uh, are what we call neutrophiles. So when the ear is mildly acidic, it, they're not, it's not the optimal conditions for them to reproduce in the ear and potentially become pathogenic, but um, without wax, the pH level of your ear can increase, it can become more neutral and alkaline, and then these bacteria, as I said, they're neutrophiles. When the pH is more at 7, they can then start to exponentially reproduce, colonise, and it also allows other non-native bacteria the opportunity to invade the ear canal and colonise. So, so the, the wax helps to provide a mild acidity to the ear. Um, as I mentioned, earwax is uh, hydrophobic, so it repels external water, so we don't want water in the ear because it can macerate the skin. So the skin itself is hydrophilic, it likes to absorb moisture. But if you have too much water in the ear and the, the skin cells absorb it, the skin cells then begin to overhydrate, they swell and they burst at the membranes and the outer layer of protective skin is, is no longer there. So the wax helps to repel external water, but it also helps to keep internal moisture in. Um, so it helps to moisturize the skin. Uh, lubricate the skin and then of course any foreign particles that may enter the ear they stick to the wax and uh, for the majority of it's 90 percent of the population the wax well that in the uk at least the wax naturally migrates out so i managed to get that plug of wax keratin is quite embedded the eardrum has got some um, kind of uh, more thinner uh, thinning on that eardrum so uh, there's different sections of that eardrum that looks thinner than the other and you can give you these shadows effects i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well and speak soon bye